Hello and welcome to Off The Beaten Pot, bringing great food back to the great outdoors. And today we are looking at three tiny items that you have to have in your backpack. Hello, my name's Tom. Before we get properly into this video, I've got a couple of dates coming up in which I will be heading out into the outdoors, which is very exciting. So I will be putting together a series from shop to summit, going through my um, planning process and buying process, prep process, and obviously cooking as well. So if you'd like to stay tuned on that and you're not already, please consider subscribing to this channel by dinging the bell notification below, liking this video, uh, sharing and doing all the YouTube things to try and get that algorithm to send these videos to as many people who might benefit from them as possible. With that out of the way, let's look at the three items I'm talking about. So obviously there are loads and loads of tiny things you can have in your backpack. Uh, these are just three that I was going through, I've got in the brain of my backpack, I have what I call my gear shed, um, which is this sort of gear pouch from uh, Fjall Raven, which um, I had the opportunity to buy at a massively reduced cost because ultimately it is, it's very nice, but it's a pencil case. You don't need this, but it's what I have. And in it I have, uh, generally what my gear shed my garage or my shed the my, my um, useful bits that are in an emergency um so for example i've got my spare shoelaces because i've needed them before i've got repair patches for tents sleeping pads and the like i've got a spare gasket for my tranger um a couple of waterproof matches and some spare feet for my walking poles but beyond that i've got a couple of other items which i've got out here ready to show you and another item that I keep in my cook pot that most people may not have considered to put in their cook pot. So I will stop ranting and get on with showing you these damn things. So number one, it's uh, as from my second video, I mentioned always having a heat source, a second heat source. So I have my lighter usually, but also this ferro rod. Um, you just need friction. So I often use the back of my knife like most people, there are videos aplenty on how to use these. So you just back of the knife, and scrape. I'm not going to scrape it here because I'm in my studio surrounded by a lot of gear that I don't want to get sparks over. It's tiny, it takes up no room, it weighs next to nothing. This one is beautiful and it was made by Nixon Creations. You can check them out on Instagram, I'll leave a link below. Um, not sponsored, no commission. I just saw them on a, a, a local group and really like the fact this is handmade. Item number two, and this is for me one of the most important items and probably most lightweight items in my cook set and that is a tin opener and this is an old school tin opener and you've got loads of companies who mimic this but this is a US shelving company American Army issue tin opener they're less than five quid online I got I got two for seven pounds free postage and packaging from eBay and they are just amazing bomb proof they do exactly what they're meant to and nothing more they fold flat and they open tins. I'm not gonna mansplain how to use a tin opener to you on here, but it's incredibly useful, especially if you're doing your own cooking because you want to get away from um, pre-packaged and pre-made meals. This is gonna be key and it is banging and it is less than a fiver. So that's item number two, and that is my Shelby Company tin opener. Number three, now this is a bit fancy, multi-tools. Let's talk multi-tools. This is the Gerber dime, and it is a multi-tool. I don't, I used to always, I used to take a massive Leatherman, never ever used it. Um, and then recently, in the last few trips, I started having a bit of issue with my shoe, like the, um, the eyelets on my shoe kept bending out and snagging. So I had to press them back and I couldn't find anything with enough pressure and I needed to use a multi-tool and I'd, picked this up a while ago and it's really really nifty it's tiny it doesn't weigh much and it fits into the palm of my hand or in any corner of your backpack without adding too much weight the lightweight community who are trying to shave off milligrams of weight will hate this but um my backpacking isn't necessarily about this but for the amount of tools it has within it the weight actually you know for every tool is one bit of weight the, the overall weight isn't so bad. So it's got a bottle opener. Don't always take a bottle of beer out with me, but I have done sometimes and it's nice just to be able to use a bottle opener. 
Granted, some of these can be found on this. This is my Gerber Complete. I've done a review video for that, which you can find here. This is amazing. And generally I take this out with me for all of my cooking needs. It has a tin opener on it and it has a bottle opener on it as well um, as other features. But this is the, this is the multi-tool I've got that stays in my backpack on a just in case basis. So the pliers help me for fixing stubborn things, um, uh, for straightening things out, for sorting out my hiking poles. I've used them a lot for tightening my hiking poles. I've used them a lot for fixing my shoes um, and any little bit of moving gear that can go wrong. And shock horror, I'm a YouTuber, so I have a vid uh, camera with me and a few bits and bobs, and this is useful for helping me maintain those bits of gear. You know, it's also got screwdrivers, uh, don't necessarily use those, two flathead screwdrivers, and if you're still bound for single-use plastic tear-open packet things, it's got a packet opener, which um, most people can find useful, but it is tiny. It's tiny, it's relatively lightweight, and I put that in the top of my backpack, and I forget about it, and if I need it, it is there. The knife on this is tiny, but it's really sharp, and really well, you know, nice ergonomic design to it. Okay, so I said it was three items, so it's time for a bonus item. And in my cook set, in most cook sets, you pack it in tightly so, you, you know, you make it modular. I've got my, uh, my off-the-beaten-pot cook set, which I use, which I've made of my own. You can see a video about that here. It's my first ever video, it's cringeworthy, so bear with it, I'm going to review it and maybe do a new one. What I'm trying to say is they've all got a bit of space, and what you want to put in this space are these. Now these are incredible travel pots for shampoo and conditioner for when, back in the days when we... Back in the days when we used to fly everywhere, and you're only allowed to take a certain amount of... Uh, juice goo liquid onto flights you can buy these pots you can still buy them from most supermarkets I've got a link you can click below for Amazon you can buy relatively like you know buy in bulk or batch and they're so inexpensive and they're really good at holding food items so in this I will have either chili sauce or olive oil or Worcester sauce you get the idea even salt and pepper um, so long as you're happy to portion you can fill these up with different items so yeah salt pepper garlic you get the idea I'm not going to go through it but anything you want that adds flavor you can put in here um, even washing up liquid if you take washing up liquid out with you um, toothpaste etc so on so forth it's it's lightweight I don't have to tell you it's a tiny plastic bottle and I keep it in my cook set wedged around the things it also stops the things from rattling so just a quick quick recap then the three things plus the bonus thing that I have that everyone needs in their backpack. Ferro rod as an excellent secondary fire source, fire making source. Shelby Company tiny little tin opener. It's a tin opener. Does what it says on the tin. Uh, Gerber Dime multi-tool i'm sure there are other companies that are doing tiny ones as well but this is the one i have and i've making my gear last so i don't need a new one because this does more than i needed to do and finally a tiny little travel bottles that you get for traveling putting shampoo and conditioner in except they are excellent for sources so thank you very much for watching this episode of Off The Beaten Pot. I am really looking forward to getting out and sharing more recipes with you. Um, if there's anything you want to do, obviously I'm thinking of what videos to make at the moment. I've got a long list of ones I think will be useful, or if not useful, there's stuff I feel I need to say and I will spew forth onto this channel. If there's anything you think, you know what, I'm missing this information about cooking in the great outdoors and I reckon Tom can help me with the answer let me know in the comments below and i would be happy to uh, have a look and see if i can help you with your answers until then i'm tom your ace this is off the beaten pot cheers and gone oh. off the beaten pot cheers and gone Enchanté.